I think they shouldn't increase it, but I feel like they will so that they put a nail in that coffin and get it over with. I'm with you on that, yeah. <laughs> so I think... I think they should increase it if they're going to increase it in yeah. the next six months. Now should be the time because people, as you mentioned, are away, are a little bit preoccupied with other things. And so that will help kind of soften the blow. Hi everyone and welcome to Reality Check where we discuss what's happening in Toronto's real estate market, hopefully where it's going, and help you make informed decisions buying and selling real estate. Nima. I'm Devani. Welcome to our new setup. We keep changing it up, keeping it fresh for keeping you guys. Keeping it fresh, yeah. Let us know what you think. We got Justin behind the camera and we're gonna start it. What were the stats in June? As predicted, yeah. actually the prices came down a little bit. The prices came down. You know, it's crazy and I hope you guys can keep up because as we're gonna walk you through these numbers, by the end of it, you're gonna be like, wait, things are up. Of course, Nima's phone rings. He's a busy guy. Yeah, things my go bad. You're gonna be like, things are going up, things are going down, what is happening? Because when we compare month over month versus year over year, it's completely different scenarios. Yeah. So try to keep up. Yeah, so I mean like <laughs> the, the whole thing is that the prices for four yeah. months in a row, they went up mm -hmm. and we had the rate increase and that kind of skewed the numbers. Yeah. So let's start with the market watch and go through just overall what's been happening. So we had about almost 7,500 sales. So sales are somewhat picking up. Active listings went up to just over 14,000. So we're at 14,107, which is good because not a lot of inventory was out there. Average price, however, is at $1,182,000. And the month of inventory went up to 1.89. Still which, really low. Which is really low still, which is really low. And uh, what, do you, what do you think? Well, I was gonna say, if you wanna compare last year to this year, it's extremely low. Well, last year to this year, yeah. Where is my chart two, right now? The yeah. month of inventory was so, at 2 point something, and now yeah, it's at so 1. 2.49 last year. Yeah. Well, like, keep in mind, last year things really slowed down. So, But why I wanted to mention that is just because, yes, you know, pricing obviously is a little bit on, not the decline, but on a slow and steady up. Well, yeah. And right so now, yeah. those numbers are going to actually put pricing pressure. Yeah. So that's a really uh, an important number for everyone to keep in mind. It's a big indicator. Exactly. I mean, prices did come down slightly month over month, but yes. that's really like you don't notice that. So last month we were at... You don't notice it, but some sellers have noticed it and they're like, wait a second, where is it going to go? So it's causing a little bit of uncertainty. I think the reason for that yeah. is because when in May people saw one house that sold for X amount, the next yeah. one sold maybe by 5% higher, 10% higher. They thought it was going to continue. And, you know, people are conditioned because we've been through this a few times. Yes, we have. They thought, like, if they put their house on the market, they're going to see the same result. They're going to have 17 offers and they're going to get, let's say, 100 grand more than the last sale on the street. But it wasn't happening. And we saw time and time again, a lot of properties missed their offer dates. Yes. Could Especially be for multiple in the last reasons, though. Weeks. Yeah. Um, yeah, they wouldn't get offers yeah. and they wouldn't even get the same price they were hoping for. Pretty much since the last interest rate hike, yeah. there was a little change in the marketplace, right? This Should interest. be expected. Yeah, June 7th. So uh, when we're recording this, this is before July 12th uh, announcement, but you know we're going to get into what we think and we'll see if it actually comes to fruition. Okay, so let's go talk about uh, exactly what's going on. So the... Prices have softened slightly, but again, area with area is behaving differently. Overall, the month of inventory came up. So last month, we're at 1.32 months of uh, inventory. Right now, we're at 1.89. So uh, things have a little bit improved in terms of inventory. Um, what else should be mentioned in terms of the inventory, Debbie? Well, first of all, we're looking at this as a big overview. So we'll start with GTA from a yeah. bird's eye view. And then we'll so. obviously go into micro markets and, and See dig deeper yeah. into what's happening. Because there are little discrepancies with all the numbers. Yeah. So let's talk about uh, GTA as a whole. Yeah. So the average price is sitting at 
100,000. The condo average price is at $739,000. Keep in mind, pre-COVID, February of 2020, the average price of a condo was higher than what we have right now. But again, things are different and numbers fluctuate. I think if anyone's in the market, is a good time to be buying a condo. The prices are good and you can negotiate a really good deal there. I agree with that. Uh, let's move on to a sub market of York region because that is an interesting one. We have a lot of fluctuation there, but one thing that's really interesting in York region is that the average price in June was higher than June of last year. Okay. So we were up higher by about 6%. So right now, the average price is sitting at $1,391,000. Why do you say that's peculiar? That, that is higher? Well, yeah. it dropped drastically last year. Well, so, but why do you think it's peculiar that it picked up so much? It's the amount that you're like... Because the, the drop that it saw last year in June and July was drastic, especially in July when we had the 1% interest rate hike. Mm -hmm. The average... And actually, we should like go and show what we talked about last year. Sure, but I remember it. that. Yeah. Uh, the prices from the peak to June had dropped by about 400000 So the price had dropped so much. But it's catching up. Because it became affordable. You didn't affordable. expect the catch up. Yeah. That's what I wanted yeah. people so to it's understand. Got, yeah, it's gone like, up it's drastically. Surprising. And we're going to look at some of the detached segment and the condo segment in New York region just to contrast it. But the prices became too attractive, especially in the last few months that the interest rate kind of held pretty good. People. And that's crazy because nothing happened, guys. The interest rate simply held. That, that, is, that is crazy, Can yeah. Can you imagine, this is food for thought, when they're going to drop it, what is going to happen? Yeah. What do you think is going to happen? I'm actually scared <laughs> and very excited. <laughs> well, the whole thing is um, there's a lot of people on the sideline. And mm -hmm. with the announcement on July 12th, I think a lot of things are going to change. What do you think is going to change? First of all, what do you think is going to happen? Well, regardless of what's going to happen, if they, in, in, they increase their rates, yeah. what, I mean, I think for the following two months, yeah. there's going to be pretty much, it's going to be slow. And rightfully so, because July and be August, anyways. July and August are typically slower months. And right now we're out of COVID. Everyone is away. I mean, like right now, a lot of our own clients are away. I mean, I don't know why they didn't go away. You went away, but I was supposed to go away. So um, a lot of people are away. That is one of the reasons why it's going to slow down. Prediction? Second, What's your prediction? That the rates is going to go up or not? Yeah. I think they should. I, we're going to talk about it. Uh, actually, yeah. you know what? Let's talk about it right now. OK. So let's, do it. let's talk about the Me prediction. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, listen. <laughs> There is an article right now, Bank of Canada rate hikes at the best is going to be unnecessary. Right. That's what they're saying. All the banks are saying do not raise the interest rates because the consumer spending has dropped yes. below pre-pandemic level. We're back in the threes. They wanted the inflation number to be in yeah. the threes. So that's so, happening. So, I mean, the inflation number is low and there's always a lag. So right now that they increase it in June, you won't see the effects immediately. There is going to be a lag of about 60 to 90 days yeah. easily before you can see the effects of it. So I think they shouldn't increase it, but I feel like they will so that they put a nail in that coffin and get it over with. I'm with you on that. Yeah. <laughs> so I think... I think they should increase it if they're going to increase it in yeah. the next six months. Now should be the time because people, as you mentioned, are away, are a little bit preoccupied with other things. And so that will help kind of soften the blow. Exactly. So I think if they do it, at least people know there will be no more interest rate hikes. Yeah, and they know what to expect. And I feel like then, you know, September, October rolls around, there's going to be a good pickup in the number of sales, yeah, average prices confidence. again, better confidence, and things are going to start rolling. And when I say confidence, I say that on both ends. Confidence for the sellers to get the numbers they want because things are happening for them, and confidence for the buyers that are, you know, locked in and know what their payments are going to look like. Exactly. So, I mean, like, listen, I'm going to put the link for this article below, but yeah. essentially, uh, ahead of the Bank of Canada's interest rate announcement next Wednesday, an economist at one of country's big six banks is urging the central bank to stop raising the rates, calling it unnecessary. So, I mean, again, the rates, the inflation rate is where they wanted it in the threes. So, I mean, their goal is, I think, in the mid twos, but I think we're going to get there soon with what's going on. So, with that being said, I think July and August, 
average prices, I feel like it's going to be lower than what we see we saw in May. Mm -hmm. That is my prediction. Any thoughts on that? I don't know about lower, but lower, yeah. Lower month over month. Yeah, month yeah. over month, sure. Yes. Yeah. So we'll see what's going on uh, the following month, but it is a good time to be purchasing because there's a lot of people that purchase yeah. homes back in again. May and right now with the interest rate hike, a lot of people have stopped. So if you're in the market, you're going to find some good deals. I mean, I uh, ran into three properties for clients, one in Oldfield, two in Richmond Hill, yeah. that on the offer presentation. Didn't sell. Well, not only did so one of them didn't even get any offers. The other ones only got one or two offers, yeah. and they were expecting a frenzy. So, but less showings too, right? So. Drastically less showings. Okay, so before we actually go and compare detached um, prices, condo prices in York Region, and see why the actual uh, increase Numbers. actually happened, yeah. let's look at what happens uh, in the overall GTA. In the overall GTA, in terms of different segments of homes, yeah. so product types. Devani had a good chart. Uh, yeah. So we have this here. I came here. across this chart actually from Treb. So I thought it was really uh, like digitally friendly. And it's a really good comparison to yeah. just see side by side, literally comparing product types. So condo, townhouse, semis, and detached. Yeah. So if you're looking at a condos, you're looking in the 700s. Townhouses start in the 9s, semis in the 1.2s, all the way to detached at the 1.5. Yeah. So more or less, if you're jumping product type, expect a 200K yeah. jump per product type. Again, this is on average, um, and this is taking into account everything in the GTA. Exactly, so, which, is a, which is a good comparison. Cool. Yeah, and now going back to the York region with what's going on there. Yeah. So overall, 6.5% almost increase in the prices. In the detail segment, the prices in June actually went up again slightly. So they were hovering at around 1.73 million. Now they're at one million seven hundred and almost forty thousand dollars. So the detached went up. The condos actually went up too. So the condos were hovering around seven hundred and seventeen thousand average price. Now they're up to seven hundred and nineteen thousand dollars. But again, like big jump. Big well, like I mean, like a few thousand. But like comparing it to June of uh, last year, we were at uh, six hundred and eighty-seven. Yeah, you know, I shouldn't say that. Slow and steady wins the race. Yeah. So. so it's a good jump and like, you know, comparing last June detached prices to now. Uh, so last June we were hovering at $1,608,000 for detached. And now it's at $1,740,000. So that's a big jump right there for the detached market. Although, you know, doesn't look like it, but no. things have picked up. And again, rightfully so, because prices got to an attractive price point for people to uh, start moving and purchasing them. Mm -hmm. So, talked about the overall market. We talked about Toronto and New York. I want to talk about just how the months of inventory have been fluctuating yes. since last year. So, yeah, that's um, a good one. since last year, I mean, we were at two and a half months of inventory. Right now, at 1.89 months. Since January alone, though, January, we were at three months of inventory. It's really fluctuated since January. Yeah. So three months of inventory, and we were almost like gonna go into the balanced market. Uh, things were pretty slow in January. Then we went down to two months of inventory in February. Then we went to 1.47, almost one and a half months of inventory in March. But that was also spring market, so yeah. following more traditional trends. Yeah, and then in right? April, yeah, exactly. In April, it went up to two months, but then suddenly dropped down to 1.32 months of inventory. Here's the thing, though, I find, and you can correct me or give your input if you think I'm wrong or if you have a difference of opinion. I feel like why are people moving is the big reason. So, like, when I meet people and they're telling me, oh, I'm thinking of getting into, you know, a new home. Why? Why, 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 why? What is the motivator? And I do feel like the reason why people move a lot of times has to do with what other people are doing. And there's that pent up demand from January, like you were yeah. saying, that three months of inventory that really was cut in half, right? Yeah. By March. By March. And so it's almost like everyone's like monkey see, monkey do. And now I feel in July, we're going to see those people that really had the need to make the move, make the moves. That's exactly what it is. A lot of people uh, get into the FOMO, they see properties again going up in prices and 
based on the experience they've had previously, you know, when the prices month over month sometimes go up by two, three, four percent, it becomes to the point that you don't want to be the one that buys it three months down the road and pay another hundred, hundred fifty thousand. Yeah. So a lot of people jump the gun, and again, a lot of them they had a need to purchase. Is it a necessity for yeah. you? Because I'm what we've been seeing in the last four or five months is majority of the people purchasing properties in York region, Toronto region, um, there are all people that need a place yeah. for themselves. So they're either selling a condo, moving into a townhouse. Whatever or a the, the case may be, yeah, you're moving no one to a job really... relocation. So if you have that necessity and you're buying something at 100K more or yeah. whatever the case may be, you guys, $100,000, we're looking at what? Five, 550 yeah. payment per month? So somebody who has a need is going to pay that extra $500, right? Or they're going to lock in maybe just a shorter term for the mortgage exactly. so that they can get into their next home, which that's what I think we're going to really see in July. I think yeah? so, yeah. I think that's, that's exactly we're what's going to happen. On the gonna, same page. I, that's, I think that's what's going to happen. Yay. With, uh, I, I feel like also if once uh, the interest rates go up, regardless of it, you know, making the payments also uh, tougher, I feel like, again, market will pick up because then they will know there's no more interest rate hikes, yeah. I guess, on the horizon. Hopefully, that will be the last of that. So with that being said, if you were to sell your house right now in the mm -hmm. summer, would you sell it now or would you sell it in the fall? You're asking me? Yeah. I would sell in the fall. There you go. I would sell in the fall, but this is a personal question. Yeah. And no, again, I mean, it is a personal question. So we give you these numbers, but based on your specific situation, that's what you should be doing. It's really personal. Anytime, anytime you're selling a property, you got to look at your situation first. Yeah. Uh, you can never time the market, but look at what you're doing. Because if you're selling and purchasing in the same market, then you know it's not a problem, especially if you're upgrading because higher price points probably had a higher uh, drop and are slower, so you're going to get a better deal. Yes. So you got to look at that. Second, if you're selling to cash out, that's a different story. Maybe totally. you wait, wait in the fall and then sell it. So this is why when I get these questions like, you know, should I be selling right now or should I be selling in the fall? Or should I buy or sell first? Yeah. It's not it's a all, place, it's all. Exactly. It's case dependent. You got to look at what you're exactly doing. So with that being said, I always say consult your realtor because mm -hmm. you got to see what gonna be the best advice and situation for yourself. You say it like consult your realtor, like they're gonna consult someone else. Consult us. Well, listen, <laughs> and while we're in the same topic, be sure to hit that subscribe button. Yes. We gotta get these subscribe numbers up. Yeah. Share it with people that you find any of this content to be useful for them. And uh, yeah, and let us know if there's any other questions yeah. or comments you have, and let us know what you think of the new set. Absolutely. And Let uh, us help you make money. Exactly, and I think the next month is going to be an interesting one once we know exactly what happened with the uh, interest rates and uh, yeah. go from Strap there because the market right now is uh, pretty much, uh, I would say, stabilized and everyone's in the standstill to see uh, what's, going on, what's going to happen with the interest rates. Guys, if you find this episode useful, please be sure to check our Real Talk with Yanni Lee, the art of investing in pre-construction. There are some good nuggets there that you can take away from. And be sure to recommend that to your friends as well. Should we play ping pong there too? Absolutely. What you guys don't see is there's a whole ping pong set up <laughs> in the background, so we'll so let you know. So maybe we'll do that later too. But thank you for watching and we'll see you next month.